Overcoming Vim phobia. Uh, when I learned Vim, I actually had Vim FOMO. I had such phobia or FOMO of missing out on Vim. And mine was right around 2012 when I started learning Vim. Anyways, hee-haw, here we go. I've been coding for almost a decade now. And for anyone who spends two-thirds of his day doing, uh, doing so, his tool chains matters. Let's go for a walk down memory lane. This article is going to be different. Disclaimer, today's content is going to be subjective. Okay. I like, I like subjective content. I was dabbling in Notepad++. I actually did try Notepad++ for well over 10 minutes and then realized, ain't no way I'm going to be using Notepad++ to learn Java development uh, as a young, clueless potato. In my school, they forced us to use BlueJay, BlueJay to learn Java. Uh, at that moment, I didn't even understand what an editor was. To me, it seemed like Notepad with extra buttons. Yep, fair. Okay, this is completely fair. The focus was on learning program, not DX, developer experience. The only intriguing thing I uh, was that I could run code using a plugin by pressing one of the function keys. It, uh, it gave me a big advantage over writing in Notepad and running Windows command prompt. Absolutely. Did someone just say they make their living using Notepad++? I made a living with Notepad++ for almost two years. That is insane. You are crazy. You are crazy. Key points. It's good to have a place uh, to write and execute code together. Okay, fair. Two years later, Eclipse. Oh! Oh! Oh, the, the poor man! Why would you want to do this? I could decently code in a couple languages now. One of, uh, one of the books I was reading recommended the next shiny thing, Eclipse. Eclipse had hit quite the right spot. For the first time, the tool chain was becoming addictive. The joy of coding, building, and running those Java swing apps without diving into the build and execution system was simply mwah. Yeah, I, I do agree. There was something very beautiful about having everything just build with NetBeans, the superior Java experience net beans okay net beans the internet was not big so i often would go through uh, offline docs and figure out uh, figure my way out i got let's see it got tedious at times but there wasn't another way out uh for the first time i wondered oh why this software didn't behave like the previous one uh, no, I didn't know the word IDE yet. I only knew that Java runs on 3 billion devices. It had to be good. Uh, and I had to be good at it. This is a fair take. Hate is a strong word. I hate Java. Also fair. Type one in the chat if you have never programmed Java and you hate Java. All right, all right, all right, all right. Key points. It's better if your software can handle the configuration work for you. It's even better if the software, if your software can tell you what to write next. Fair. Uh, meeting Linux in Vi. Linux. I also run a piece of, uh, piece of bread from last week. Wait, run on, I also run on a piece of bread from last week. Fair. Windows, your CPU is not of the latest generation. Please click here to find out more information. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. Pretty good meme right there. I got this new blue laptop. The sticker says Ubuntu. It, do you guys say Ubuntu or Ubuntu? I like to say Ubuntu. See, me personally, I'm kind of on a, I'm kind of on a different train a little bit. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm more of the uh, I'm more of a fan of the Ubuntu. Anyways, uh, I'm not sure where that was going. Uh, let's see, let's see. What the heck is this thing? Uh, where is my DVD with pirated Windows and activation key written on the back of it? I went to school library and boy, that book on Unix gave me tremors of joy. I decided to shift to Linux permanently. I never uh, and I've never touched Windows ever since. Based, 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 based. Uh, same here. Same thing happened here. It's pronounced as Arch. It's Arch. Uh, I couldn't understand why weirdos on the internet always suggested editing random config files using something called Vi. Uh, who, who on God's uh, green earth would open up the terminal, navigate to a file, enter into this creepy th uh, Vi thing where one can't even quit? This was literally my mentality 2010. This was my mentality 2010. I kid you not. I use Vim full time now. This was my mentality completely. Isn't it funny how that works? Uh, sadly, it was part of the college curriculum and I had to write in it. The good thing is, is that after you press I, Vi becomes normal. I hated it so bad that I wrote a G edit config. So my professor thought I was coding in the terminal. What a great professor. Let's go professor. Let's go. Great professor. Uh, something about writing a G config edit or a G config just to do that. Also great. Teaching you to get around it. I can appreciate that. Key points. Never push for a product slash outcome. You may push for an idea and see if people resonate with it. Every developer should use Linux. No exceptions. Personal take. I also consider Mac OS a Linux distro. I'm just waiting for chat. I'm just waiting for chat. Chat is in shambles. What the hell is this? Oh, man. 
Uh, all right, Sublime Art of Coding. Oh. If you hit, uh, let's see, hits S twice, Sublime Text. I'm once again asking you for financial... <laughs> You know what the best part about this this meme is? Is that it actually puts programmer humor right here. And you know for a fact that programmer humor steals and does not ever give the original source credit. Ever. Shy Ryan can tell you all about it. Shy Ryan, you wanna tell you wanna you wanna tell them all about it? There's a picture of me on on programmer humor, and they don't even know who I am. Uh, now, things were taking shape. I have decided my career path as a web developer. I often build small utility apps. Again, the book was uh, I was referring to told me that Sublime is the next shiny thing. Ahoy, I was on bo board. There is something about it that feels close to my heart. It was JSON configuration. I spent the whole week uh, tweaking things in the settings file. It was near magical experience uh, to copy a JSON file on a USB drive and make my friend's machine like mine. Low-key dot files. <laughs> Fair, fair. I mean, I like that experience. It's a good experience. It's a good experience that you can have what you want and you can save it to a USB and just make something else yours. Beep. I mean, we call it Git now these days, but I guess you could say it also. At that point, my Sublime started to look like a different application to regular Sublime users. To this day, I am a hardcore rising fan, a fancy term for customizing your software. And yes, I'm immune to that pop-up asking me to buy Sublime. Just like good old WinRAR. There was somebody in Twitch chat whose name was I actually bought WinRAR. It was it was one of the best. It was one of the best ones ever. All right, the rise of VS Code. When people ask me to recommend a text editor, Visual Studio Code, absolutely everyone got on board on this. I spent about I spent about probably three to six months trying to make Visual Studio Code work for me. Key points missed. Oh, I missed the key points. Okay, okay. Sublime was fast for that kind of for uh, for the kind of things it can do. Absolutely, it's still really fast. It, Sublime was one of the best editors ever for opening up large files. It was really good. Uh, the only reason it failed was due to VS Code's similar pitch, corporate backing, and excellent community support. Developers moved to VS Code, and no uh, and no one develops uh, tooling around software they personally don't use. Vim is nowhere close to Sublime's power, the almighty GUI, but the community stuck to it. And it became awesome over time. I, don't, I mean, I don't know about that last sentence, but whatever. Key point number two, maybe I disagree with. Prime in shambles. I'm in shambles. Let's see. I felt like I was getting uh, getting ancient and even started working professionally. Sublime Text was like the back of my hand now. Every key binding and config option lived in my mind, not to mention the plethora of extensions well customized for my workflow. Flow. At that point, losing my Sublime config folder was more of a worry than the laptop itself. Just kidding. I knew I knew Git by then. <laughs> and yet, and yet, Mr. Never Use Windows again, still calling them folders. Absolutely shame. Just a shame to see. Just a shame to see. Uh that's actually my <laughs> my favorite Linux neckbeard shaming is uh, actually it's directory. Windows are folders. Okay. Uh, the office was asking to work in VS Code. So again, there was no option. Spent a month tweaking it. In the end, I wondered what a Frankenstein's monster I had made. It looked like Sublime. It responded like Sublime married to VS Code and started heavy like uh, my old friend's Eclipse. <laughs> the worst part was that uh, the senior guy scolded me every time he tried debugging on my machine. Using hacker problems. No big deal. Usual hacker problems, no big deal. Oh my goodness. One thing I fell in love about VS Code was uh, is its zero config extension ecosystem, and it overall felt smart under the hood while coding. I could feel that it had something uh, that Sublime lacked. To this day, VS Code has been my favorite coding software. If something can be coded, it will eventually be in VS Code. I feel like uh, I I feel it is the modern version of Emacs. What? Emacs is an operating system. Okay, what what is he talking about? I felt the difference between strict and dynamic type languages firsthand. I worked on Ruby on Rails those days, and dynamically typed languages are a nightmare for any editor. <laughs> Don't tell DHH. Shh. Shoot me. But I hate Ruby. Shh. Stop it! DHH could, could hear us at any moment. Python, JavaScript, etc. Even though I code in them daily for one reason. Uh, maybe for that one reason, I knock on the doors of JetBrains from time to time. Fair. 
Key points. VS Code had a vision of being an omnipresent editor, and the community made it, made it happen. I know the community the, – really, the community has the biggest bamboozling. That's the best part is that Microsoft got the community – to do so much heavy lifting for them. Its core is rigid and well thought out, on top of which people make what they want. It's a ble let's see, its blessings proves to be its curse. Since anybody can easily write anything, people write them without much thought and later blame VS Code for being slow. Well, I mean, it's also written in JavaScript, so there's only so much it can do. You know, to be fair, JavaScript is like single execution. It's not like you can, it's not like it can just magically become multi-threaded. Uh, oops, I have a bit of perfection problem. It happens. This happens. It's literally a browser. It's literally a browser. What's this OCD looking thing, uh, you ask? It's a condition where you are a bit too strict about how things should be. You may say, wow, that's a good thing. But then if your uh, table's edges don't match your laptops, you, and you get a shiver of anxiety. That's how, Dude, I used to, I swear, I used to be so bad that I would even organize my shirts by like colors by type, I would organize everything so much. And I remember one day I was sitting there organizing everything and I just thought, what am I doing with my life? And it completely disappeared. Like it just, it just disappeared from my life. From that moment, I just realized I will never be so concerned about things again like that. Like, I can't. I, I emotionally cannot handle the amount of time I spend organizing the most meaningless things. And then it just went away. It just went away. I even still remember exactly where I was. I was in the, Johnst the Johnston uh, dormitories in Bozeman, Montana. It was awful. I remember just, like, spending an entire day just organizing the stupidest shit. And then I just realized I can never do this again. I could never do this again. I now buy the same socks, right? The same socks every single time. No, this was long after my meth days. Uh, I buy the exact same pair of socks. I do not fold socks. I buy the same set of shirts. I have three or four shirts. That's it. They're all the same shirt, and I buy black hoodies. And I just don't think about crap anymore. You know how annoying it is to just just spend your life doing that. Also, I get distracted fast, so I need the fo uh, focused environment. I left this article to get the above image, and now I'm back after reading about the movie this meme came from. Okay, cool. We're on the same page now. See, we aren't much different after all. <laughs> That's a pretty good statement. I like both environments, outside and inside the laptop, to be ultra minimal. Check out this screenshot at the bottom of the page. Uh, they... Uh, there aren't even clo uh, close icons on the application windows, if possible. From letter spacing and fonts to the inner padding of a pop-up, everything is a trigger. To be honest, it makes me happy to do this kind of stuff, and if you search for Unix Rising, you'll get blown away. On the other hand, literally on the other hand, I started getting wrist pain due to the constant jumping from letters and arrows. Grinding 80 hours a week comes with its own perks. Yeah. This is one of the reasons... I switched to Vorak. I was Googling about wrist pain conditions, and funnily enough, one of the tips was using Vim mode on your computer. That sneaky Vi, I couldn't even understand, was the same thing until I opened it. I had some residual, uh, residual hate towards it. <laughs> Let's go. For, uh, for, the, for server work, I was using Nano. Later, I moved to Micro, which was closer to VS Code bindings. Every stunt it takes to avoid my arch nemesis, Vi. I realized uh, that, or stint, did I say stunt? Is it supposed to be stint? Uh, that literally every tool uh, I use has a weird sublime and VS Code hybrid key bindings. Gosh, I hate myself. I can't even use another person's computer running pure version of that software. To support the no terminal mindset over the years, I forgot all my appreciation for awk, sed, grep, etc. Things needed the change. I couldn't live in this denial. This is a great moment. This is a great moment right here. I love where this is slowly coming to. You realize that, like, it's one thing that I really like is that I can log on to any server and be fairly efficient with Vim, right? You just give me Vim. Long as I can, uh, long as I can do global marks, I'm, I'm starting to hop around pretty fast on, on, on projects I don't really use that often, you know, or on servers I never use. And it's just all of a sudden, you know, you start hopping around. Love it. It's good. It's a great experience. Once you know what you're doing, it's a great experience, even when you're not good at it. All right. 
Uh, do you enjoy, let's see, uh, do what you enjoy not necessarily keeps you abstracted from real problems. Fair. Everybody spends time in, in denial. It's normal as long as you are ready to come out of it after a realization. Learn core GNU Linux tools. This is the best piece of advice in this entire article right here. You'll understand the benefit in the long uh, term. For example, I have been much uh, better at, at regex. Okay, bad example. If I just continued using grep and set. Okay, bad example. Don't know. This is not why you do it. Stop it. Stop it. Um, but real talk. The amount of benefit you'll get from just learning these stupid things. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen somebody write something to walk a file tree. Guess who also wrote something in an interview to write or to walk a file tree for a pattern? And I did it in Java. I did it in Java. I did it in Java. Vim has search, scroll, plugins, like easy motion, Vim sneak to navigate, buffer. You should use them. Vim go. I, was, I, I resolved to use Vim, not because it's any better for my specific workflow, but because I wanted to break my dependency on VS Code. I knew I couldn't drop into Vim for my day job, so I settled on the middle ground of using Vim bindings in VS Code, courtesy of a YouTuber called Ben Awad. Ben does love, does love the VS Code Vim bindings. Uh, who showed this peaceful path of adopting Vim. I've always wondered how he could magically teleport to random places when I could only move there really fast. Uh, on the safe, let's see, on the safe side, I automatically turn it off in all my office project folders. Nothing in Vim particularly amazed me because I had a similar shortcuts in mind for VS Code. Yet the constant tussle between both was getting hard. By the end of the year, I could fluently navigate in VS Code using Vim bindings. After almost a year of usage, I started seeing the ergonomics and functional benefits. Key points. Be practical, you son of a gun. Learn to walk before you run. Temptations. To, okay, that's actually fair. Temptations to achieve what others flash uh, is a good uh, motivation. Personal willpower won't be enough to explore uncharted territories. We need some rocket fuel to kickstart the process. I honestly don't even know what that means. This is fair. This is fair. It works. It works. You know, it's hard to explain to people why Vim is so good, but I feel like every time someone gets good at a set of key bindings, even if you use the Emacs one, I've seen someone really good at the Emacs one, like once I, which still blows me away, but he doesn't type properly. And so I think the fact that Emacs is so crazy and his inability to type well worked for him. Uh, but when you see someone really good at what they use, you understand, you know what the power looks like, but until you felt it, it's just so hard to, to explain why it's so good. It's so hard to explain why it's so good. It's so hard. It's impossible. Uh, I was darn stupid of me to think that uh, one day I'll uninstall VS Code and move to Vim someday because I could navigate there similarly. Similarly. I didn't realize I was using Vim bindings for doing VS Code things. The workflow part was still a miss. All that I learned was a few keyboard shortcuts. I moved anyways. One day I had to find and replace a word in projects. I couldn't do it. So welcome back home. VS Code at this point had become my identity. I couldn't fly through code blazingly fast. Blazingly fast in VS Code. Uh, and my friends knew that, uh, me for that. So I settled back in, leaving Vim. I was happy. I could do whatever those Vim nerds could do, yet I was still in a big comfort zone bias. My problem was that I was using VS Code with hybrid key bindings and now uh, replaced even with something else. What kind of solution was that? Luckily, I got a break from office project work uh, sometime back, and I knew this was the chance to transition my configs. I realized I had no trouble in moving to, from Sublime to VS Code. It was a happy process. I started working in raw NeoVim, just raw dogging it. And yeah, it was painful. But I had a plan. Whenever I missed something, I would, re I would read NeoVim docs and add it. TJ, I, could you just hear TJ? TJ right now is crying. Oh my goodness, this is straight up. This is TJ. Look at this. This is TJ. Makes me happy. I understand and have written every single line of my editor config. Took me two months and now I have my own sweet PDE. Personal development environment. Let's go. Teej, no, TJ is crying. Teach is happier. Teach has never been happier in his life. 
TJ, let's go. Reading the docs and everything. Let's go. This uh, covered everything from default indentation fi uh, size to file tree to language servers. Earlier, I watched a YouTube video from the private gen on NeoVim setup. It overwhelmed me so badly that I had to take a week's break. <laughs> I'm thinking about my own Let's go. I do set up the entire NeoVim configuration in like 20 minutes. Everything. I did get a PrimeGen mention, but I would say it was probably a little negative mention, but still, we still got one. We still got one. Acknowledge the iceberg theory. One gets attracted to what floats and not uh, the work it will take to create and understand the base. My suggestion, if you ask, is simple. Respect it. 30 minutes. We got him. My biggest motivation for making the final switch was a new off factor surrounding Vim as a software. All you see in the screenshots below, text terminal on the windows, no images, no real buttons, no GUI of any kind. They aren't even real icons. It's, all, it's really hard. I imagine you can't even change uh, the font or the size of it. Every single thing is carefully manipulated text on a black terminal window. That respect for the people who built it keeps me going. All right. I think we're hitting the end here. PrimeGen making uh, new Vim users feel bad. I am. You're welcome. I thought the video was great. Okay. People loved it. Like and subscribe. Hey, like and subscribe right now. Press the like and subscribe button. Now that I have fully moved my workflow to new of him, it doesn't feel any different. I was already using, uh, used to the Vim bindings. By the way, this is the best way to do it. If you're going to learn Vim, learn Vim bindings first. Okay. Learn Vim bindings first. It's totally worth it. It's totally worth it because then you don't have to fight. Like you don't want to learn two things at once. Learn one thing. Learn one thing. Just one. All right. Exactly. Uh, the, uh, let's see. The only aesthetics I have changed. Yet the good parts, I understand how these moving pieces work. I understand that the inline error messages shows from where these fancy auto completions come, how each line gets formatted, and much more. Looking back, I could have peeped into the source code of VS Code or its extension, but the mindset was to use it, not to learn it. This is a great, this is a fantastic line, by the way, right here. The mindset of VS Code is to use it, not learn it. Whereas the mindset of NeoVim is to learn it, then use it. It is just a little bit different. It is just a different type of mindset. The biggest shift uh, is that I look at software in gen uh, general from the mentality of a builder rather than a consumer. Now, when I see something, I ponder how to build it rather than use it. Let's go. After all, I'm an engineer and my identity revolves around two main things. How well I understand software and what I can build. Beautiful. Look at look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. You're using cursive. Disgusting, but whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm only. I'm judging. I'm judging. I did judge. I judged thoroughly. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that telescope. Let's go telescope. Let's go telescope. Unfortunately, I can't through, uh, go through every screen and utility. But if you'd like the setup, I can write an article on how everything I did from scratch. Okay. Nice. Uh, frequently asked questions. Will using Vim make me a better developer? Yes. Take that, uh, I take that guarantee. I agree. I know people hate that, but I actually agree with that. No harpoon screenshot. I know, Satch. It was Satch. How hard is the transition? Pretty easy. Just a few hundred key bindings. It is. The reason why is that you have to learn your environment. And learning your environment and learning how things work makes the world seem like a smaller place and a more overcomable place. And you're able to learn things in a new way just simply because you've taken such a hard step. And a lot of people don't take those hard steps very frequent in their career. And so I think it's very, very good to take those steps and to know that you should do that, right? Because language servers, there's nothing really that crazy about it. Overcomable. All right. Uh, what does it even matter? It's just an editor. My go, uh, let's see. My work goes with what I write. If you want to be an engineer or a writer, uh, figure it out fast. Uh, good that you chose engineer. Now think again. How many fundamentals of engineering do you get exposed to uh, that your day job abstracts from you? You don't want to be an engineer with a weak core, do you? You don't you do some sit-ups. Sit on a ball. It seems hard to uh, to get started. Well, will I grab it? It took two years, multiple quits, and oh, let's see. And it only worked when I started from scratch and incrementally added functionality. It's your child now. You won't say anything bad about it. Remember that you didn't choose your interests. You raise interest in a thing you put effort into. Also, really good. Yeah. 
To be honest, I lost my USB dongle. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Poor USB dongle. You know, he had the ability to make to make Sublime edit like his on any platform and then goes and loses it. Did I go fishing? I used to fish a lot. Vim Rocks hoodie comes in when? We'll think about it. Ah, this is great. This this was actually a really good article. It makes me realize like all the things that I had to do to go through Vim. Uh, mine was a little bit different journey, but I did like, I mean, I started in NetBeans or I started in like some other editors, uh, Blue Jay, then NetBeans. Uh, then I tried Eclipse, hated Eclipse, back to NetBeans, tried Vi, hated Vi, went back to NetBeans. Then from NetBeans, I went to IntelliJ. From IntelliJ, I started Vim Motions, and then I started using Vim Motions, and I got really good at Vim Motions. And then from IntelliJ, I tried out Vim, hated Vim, went back to IntelliJ, went to VS Code. Sublime's been sprinkled on and off in there for uh, so many times. From there, I went to back to VS Code. Then I went to Atom, realized Atom writes everything in CoffeeScript, went back to VS Code, realized that I still don't like VS Code, retried Vim again, still didn't like it, went back to IntelliJ. Then eventually I went back to Vim, and then I was just using Vim and starting to like it, and then I went and started using NeoVim, and I love it. Hey, the name. Don't even try it with me. The name is the Primogen. <laughs> 